Okay, so Docker. Let's learn Docker. Docker is a way to run programs in a container that is isolated from the host. What does that mean? Well, that's a very big topic, but uh, the program gets its own environment, its own IP address, its own file system, um, completely isolated from the host on which it's running. So how to, do, how to install Docker? Well, that's, I, sh I will assume that you already have Docker installed and also Docker Compose installed. So you can just run Docker. If you type Docker, and if you have the appropriate permissions, then you will see what options Docker has, what management commands it offers, and what main command it, it offers. So these are the main commands that you will use. So what can you do with it? Well, you can run uh, all kinds of server programs in Docker. Uh, for example, let's try to run uh, MySQL, or more appropriately nowadays, the open source version is called MariaDB. So I can say Docker run MariaDB colon 10. So this MariaDB is the name of the image, and 10 is the tag, which is usually the version number. So how do I know this? Well, I search the internet, and that's how I know this. So if you if you Google it, you'll get it. So let's run this. And okay, so what happened? It actually pulled the image, which I already had this image pulled, so it didn't have to download anything uh, from the internet. But then when it tried to run, it says you need to specify one of MySQL root password, allow an empty password or random root password. Um, this is a an environment variable that this particular container needs in order to function. So we will use this allow empty password. Let's copy that, this, and then run. Uh, recall the previous command and give an environment variable with minus E option, name of the environment variable, equal sign, and then the value, which is yes in this case. So if I run this, and now I have my SQL server running on this machine. This is great. Now, uh, my SQL server is running. I can hopefully connect to it. I can do other things with it. Uh, how do I get out of this? It's uh, occupying my terminal. If I press Control C, it's not doing anything. Control Z, not doing anything. It's not letting me get out of it. So that's uh, that. That is specific to this particular container image, uh, but we still have the issue. How do how do we break out of this? So in order to break out of this, I'm just going to open a new. Uh, terminal and I'm just going to run docker ps so this shows me let me make this a little smaller so that I can see the whole thing yes so this show is showing me this is the uh, docker container that I started 46 seconds ago and it's it has a, a container ID and it has a name so docker ps command is the one that shows that so I will use this name I press control I copy this and I say docker stop and then this particular uh, container name i could also use the container id let's press en enter and look it it ended so if i go back to the original uh, window uh, original terminal it's gone so in order to not have this problem what we should do is we'll see what we should do but first if i do docker ps again i don't s see no oh, but have an old container running. Um, I don't see my uh, whatever the, the name of that was. Uh, let me also stop this one. Docker stop my container. Okay, so now if I do docker ps, I don't see. Oh, there is another one there. Let's kill this one too. Docker stop this one. Okay. If I do docker ps, I don't see any of the ones that I just started. I see the other ones. If I do, now there are there might be some uh, not running but suspended, stopped. So we can find those using docker ps minus a. And as you can see, there are the list is a little bit longer. So um, you see it says status exited. 
So these are sticking around, the trusting right and elastic right and all that, they, these are sticking around. So in order to uh, kill them or actually delete them, you can run Docker container prune, prune as in stop or uh, remove all stopped containers. So that's what we are going to do. Once you do that, it deleted those two containers. If I do PS minus A again, the exited ones are not showing. Very good. So um, now let's uh, let's run that previous uh, Docker command that we ran to start MySQL. Except I don't want it to occupy my terminal, so I will I can give an extra option minus D. I also don't don't want it to stick around after it has been stopped. So I can give minus minus RM. Remember there is only one minus D because it's a short form option. Well, there is a double uh, dash because it's a long form option as in remove RM, right? So let's run that. Oh, one more problem. I do not know the name of this. I can find out by running Docker PS. But that's, oh, it's competent Chandrasekhar. So I can uh, Docker stop that one. But this time I want to give it my own name. And I can do that by saying, give, keeping the same other options and then adding minus minus name equal to, let's give it a minus minus name my container. You can give it any name really. I'm going to give my container. All right, so now it's running. I can check Docker PS, and there's my container. It is running MariaDB. Now we can get more information about this container by typing Docker container inspect, and then give it the ID or the name, my container. And there you go. So this is the container, it has some information, it's running, it's command that it's running is MySQL D, it has an entry point, but the thing of my, most interest is its IP address. You see, every container gets its own IP address. Uh, just FYI, it's because this is MySQL or MariaDB, it is actually listening on port 3306. You can see that if, again, if you see Docker PS, um, and look at this, this is 3306, uh, the port. But so Docker server is running. Let us try to connect to it. If I say MySQL, oh, I don't even have MySQL. So let's install MySQL. Okay, so now if I say, Oh, I need the IP address. Where's the IP address? The IP address is this. You copy the IP address, the MySQL, connect to this host, and the port is 3306, so we don't have to specify that. It's the standard port number for MySQL server. And then a user is equal to root, and I'm not specifying password because remember I gave an environment variable setting that says use empty password. So I press enter and look, we are connected. We are connected to MySQL server running in my, in my container and that's the IP address of the container. So if I say show tables, uh, there are no tables obviously. Oh, show databases and okay, yeah. Uh, information schema, MySQL and performance schema. Those are the ones. If I say use let's say information schema. Okay, show tables and there are some tables and I can use it. Anyway, the point is that there is a real MySQL server running. Um, so now what else can we do with it? We can actually shell into this particular MySQL um, container. MariaDB container. So Docker PS, again, this is the one, my container, right? So I just say Docker, instead of saying Docker run, which runs the entire container versus 
I can say docker exec, which executes a single command inside that container. So you say docker exec, name of the container, and now name of the command. Well, in order to run a shell inside a container, best thing to do is run sh like that. So I ran, what happened? Did anything happen? Well, it did and it didn't. What happened is it started sh, but it somehow thought that it does not have an interactive uh, terminal and that's why it exited instantly, immediately. So to get around that problem, you would say docker exec minus i as in login sh shell, create a login shell, and minus t as in uh, create a terminal t for me. So you can combine these two options, single letter commands can be, com uh, options can be combined, and you just combine them like this. Okay, let's run, and boom, we are inside the uh, the container and we connected as a root. Well, we could have connected as some other user also, um, but the default user for my my SQL image is root. So that's what is running. If I say PS AUX, look, there is my SQL D running. There is the shell that I executed. And then this is the PS command itself, which I just ran. So. My, my SQL D is running, the server is running, okay? All right, so let's uh, exit this one. And if I now say docker stop my container, then uh, the docker PS will show that it's no longer there. In fact, and not only that, but docker PS minus A will not show it either because we started the container with minus minus rm option, remember? So that's why uh, it removes the container after as soon as it stops. So now let's uh, do another one. Docker, let's try to run PHP FPM. It's a different, uh, uh, different kind of Docker image. So we will call this, we'll keep the same name, my container, I'm just used to it. And then minus D as in detach, and then uh, remove it after I'm done with it, and then set some environment and variables. But I, this particular one that I'm about to run doesn't need any environment variables because it is PHP colon 7.3 FPM Alpine. Now Alpine images are generally nice. They're, they're fairly small, so I like them. Let's hope this works. Okay, it, I think it did. So let's run Docker PS. And there's your container. Its name is my container. So if I want to uh, exec into that, I have to say, if I have to shell into that, docker exec, name of the container, sh. And there, again, the same problem. I forgot to give minus i and minus t uh, or minus it. And now I'm inside. PSAUX shows me that PHP FPM uh, bank of these processes is running. Okay, so let's do one more thing. I want to show you how to see the logs. So that Docker container is still running. I can uh, say Docker logs. And it says, well, you cannot just see logs. You have to say which container. So say my container. And there it's showing logs of my container. Now, if you wanted to uh, tail the logs, you just have to say minus F my container and now it will it is constantly waiting polling for logs and if something happens and a new log uh, message is created you will see it on this this terminal so i can press ctrl c that does not kill the container if i want to kill and stop or at least stop the container i have to say docker stop my container that's good those are the basics of Docker.